Hello, and thank you for joining us on this week's episode of Boarding All Captains. Our special guest today is Kira Lipinski. Thank you so much, Kira, for joining us. Of course, Sophia. I love talking about my study abroad experience, so I'm so excited to be able to share that today. Awesome. So to start off, can you tell us about uh, where you went on your trip and that sort of thing? Perfect. Um, I studied abroad last summer in Salamanca, Spain for five weeks. I did a summer intensive Spanish program through International Studies Abroad. Awesome, awesome. And then uh, what is your major and minor? Okay, my major is kinesiology, so like exercise science, but I do have a Spanish minor and a business administration minor here. Awesome, awesome. And then uh, what involvements are you on campus? Uh, My biggest involvement is probably social Greek life. Um, I'm president of my organization here, but I'm also involved in the honors program. I'm a member of the CrossFit Club. Oh, cool. And then <laughs> didn't you just start teaching classes? Yes, like I also fitness teach center? fitness yeah. classes here on campus. Awesome. Tell me a little bit about your favorite excursion you got to go on in the country you studied abroad in. Okay. So ISA was an incredible program to travel abroad with. They had a lot of excursions planned for us right when we got there and on our weekends and everything. Um, but my favorite excursion that we got to do, we took a weekend trip to Santander, which is in the north of Spain. Um, and we got to do a surfing lesson in the Cantabrian Sea, which oh, was incredible. Cool. Had you surfed before? No. 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 And luckily that Were day... Were the waves big? No. It, no. Okay, <laughs> luckily, <that's good. laughs> no. So I was actually able to get up on the board once. Um, nice. But it was just really cool. The seafood was incredible up there in the northern coast. Um, and it was really nice to be able to like travel through the landscape you know there's tons of mountains and everything in Spain I think when people think of Spain it's a lot of like beaches and stuff but there's actually a lot of different scenery in the country so you got to experience both a little of the mountains a little of the ocean with surfing and everything awesome yeah and then on the way back from that excursion we stopped at El Soplau which is the largest cave in Spain very Um, cool and so when we got in there there were like huge stalactites and stalagmites so that was really really neat as well very cool so for your classes uh were you at a university or what which university were you at again? So I was studying at the University of Salamanca. Okay. Um, but all of my courses were at the international section of that university. Cool. So everyone in my class was from all over the world. There were students from Germany, Korea, Japan, France, and we were all speaking in Spanish. Awesome. Yeah. So your program was like everyone had to speak Spanish. Yes. Um, awesome. So you were taking classes like, were you taking any kinesiology classes or what no. kind of classes? So that because, might be kind of hard. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely not. Um, so mine was a Spanish intensive program. So we were cool. in class from like 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Wow. And I had like a conversation class, a grammar class, and then the other one was just like general kind of, I don't know, like it was the advanced one and we yeah. just got to speak the whole time. Very so it was cool. really cool. Very cool. Yeah. So what was your housing like at the university? So my program through ISA offered two different options. The one option was to do a homestay, which I know is really popular for other programs as well. Um, So with that option, you get to stay with a family in your country of residence. Um, I didn't select that one just because I have like some dietary restrictions and I didn't really want to like inconvenience a family. Yeah. Um, So I actually chose to do dorm style living. Cool. So what that was, there was like an apartment in the city of Salamanca and the entire floor was just students. So we all had like our own rooms with a roommate. So I was rooming with a girl from the University of Colorado, but then we would all eat our meals together and there were students in that living area from different countries. And again, like we would all just speak Spanish when we were eating together. I love that. Yeah. Um, so is that kind of the main way that you made friends there or what kind of activities did you do to like meet people? Cause you didn't go with any other CNU yes, students, Yes, no, yeah. I didn't. I actually flew all by myself, but there were about 20 kids within the program from the States. Yeah. So when we got there, there were kids from all over the place, you know, like Utah, Colorado, there's a girl from Maine. Um, so we met up, but then a lot of those students chose to do the homestay. So the one girl I was rooming with, we kind of clung together a little bit, but then I made friends through my classes. Um, we'd just go explore the city together. I did choose Salamanca because it's like a university town. So there were lots of students all over the place. Um, and that's kind of what I wanted. And then with that housing option as well, I had the freedom to kind of come and go as I please. Whereas with the homestay, I know you kind of need to like let your family know when you're going to be coming and going. Right, yeah. Because I was only there for five weeks, I figured, you know, like, I want to spend as much time out exploring as possible. So that was the best option for me. Awesome. And then did you get to visit, like, any other countries or cities while you were in Spain? So when I went, this was my first time in Europe, so I kind of wanted to focus on staying in Spain. A lot of my friends in the program did go to Portugal, but I actually just did eight cities in Spain in the five weeks. Um, So like I said, I went to the north, we were down the south in Sevilla, we made it to the east in Barcelona, um, but then we did 
you know, Madrid, the capital, and then my, like, home base was Salamanca, which is in the west of Spain. Okay, awesome. Yeah, yeah I, I got the chance to go to Barcelona and Valencia during Las Vallas, um, but oh. I'm excited to, like, go back because I, you know, I'm a Span- Spanish minor as well, but uh, my study abroad program was awesome, but it was before I decided to be a Spanish minor, okay. so I didn't really get to, like, practice the immersion of being in, like, a Spanish-speaking country, but when I graduate, I'm planning on going back to Barcelona for a little bit. So. Barcelona was my favorite yeah. city that we made it to, just because yeah. it's, like, Spain is very old, like, much older than the States, obviously, but Barcelona has so much so many like modern yeah. art and culture too which yeah. I think is just such a cool mix yeah it has a young culture mm-hmm. fun like nightlife that type of thing for sure so, yeah. how did you balance traveling with schoolwork? I know that that can be a lot with you know always on the go but also having those academic responsibilities yeah so like I said my classes were from 9 to 1 Monday through Friday um, so we did have a lot of free time afterwards if I had any readings or anything to do Um, But like I said, I was studying in the international course as part of the University of Salamanca. So I think the professors kind of understood that all of us were international students, like we were there for study abroad. And so much of that learning does happen outside of the classroom. So luckily, like my schoolwork wasn't too heavy other than studying for the final exams towards the end of my program. Um, But I would definitely try to have everything done before the weekends because that's kind of when I did my bulk of traveling. Um, But anything that I did have to do, you have time on the buses or trains or anything to kind of knock that out. Yeah. Um, so how many classes did you take again? Three. Three? Okay, mm-hmm. so that's pretty good, getting like three, and were there all, those all three credits? So two of them ended up being three credits, and then the other one I think only counted for two. Um, cool, which but that's great. still great for five, for five weeks. weeks. Exactly. Yeah, and you're knocking a lot out, <laughs> and I'm sure it lightened your schedule up a little bit for your exactly. senior year as well. Exactly. Yeah, that's great. That kind of, I, I fell in the same boat of like being able to take two classes in like four weeks, and that was six credits, so it lightened my load for Absolutely. my senior year, which is nice. And so. then you're doing that learning, you know, in another country, yeah. which is such an amazing opportunity. And it's a lot of the experimental learning uh, where it's not just everything in a classroom, uh, especially when you're studying a language. You know, it's so important. And I'm sure, like, have you felt that studying abroad has really helped you within your minor? Oh, absolutely. I think just that total immersion of, you know, the street signs are in Spanish, the music's in Spanish, everyone working in the restaurants is speaking in Spanish, and just having that opportunity to completely immerse yourself forces you to use it, you know? And I felt very comfortable with my Spanish before I had gone abroad, but definitely coming back, I was just thinking in Spanish because I'd been forced to for five weeks. Definitely, you know? yeah. I mean, the one Spanish class we had together, I was like, wow, <laughs> that was really good, okay. And then when I found out you studied abroad, I was like, okay, right. go Miss Queen. No, it definitely helps. And I think with the language courses, especially, you know, like just that total immersion is the best way to learn. Definitely, yeah. yeah. So day to day outside of class, how did you spend your free time? So again, I was done by one, which is incredible because the days in Spain, maybe in Europe in general, are so much longer. Yeah. I don't know if you experienced yes, that. Yes, definitely. When you were there. It's like you eat dinner at nine p.m. Yes, yep. it just keeps going. So yep. I had so much time to kind of explore. And again, when I did select Salamanca, I knew that it was very walkable, and I knew like there was going to be tons of things for me to do. So after 1 p.m., I would go back to my dorm stay to have the meal with all the students at 2. And then after that, I would usually put on my walking shoes and I'd walk miles and miles just around the city, people watching. I'd go on tours of the cathedrals or the museums and things because a lot of that is free for students, actually. Um, I'd make it down to the park. We had a gym that we were able to use. Um, And then usually before dinner time, I would either like look at what I wanted to do for that weekend, kind of do my planning in my free time a little bit. Um, so I wasn't wasting time when I was cool, actually yeah. in those places. Did you have like a favorite restaurant or little coffee house that you would go to? Yeah. My favorite thing that I missed so much was the helado, like the ice cream. Oh my goodness. It's amazing in Spain. And I would yeah. go like every single day to get little mango ice cream. Oh, yeah. It's my little treat. Is it like sorbet-ish? Kind or of. I'm lactose is... intolerant, so okay. I can't eat ice cream. So yeah. it's kind of like sorbet, which is nice. Yeah. It's just so like soft and delicious uh-huh. and fresh. Yes. And like... I feel like the fruit, like it's so much more refreshing than it feels as heavy as like, Absolutely. ice cream. Yeah. Absolutely. It feels yeah. like it's healthier. Yeah. <laughs> well, going off of that, did you have a, like a favorite traditional cuisine that you got to try there? 
Absolutely. Paella is yeah. like pretty well known in Spain yeah. and I will say it's for good reason. Like yes. it's so delicious. And we actually got to do a cooking class through the program oh, that I fun. went with. So we made our own paella, which is like rice with either seafood or chicken and saffron. It's so delicious. Absolutely mm-hmm. so delicious. Mm-hmm. Um That's and, so fun that yeah. you got was there like you just cooked paella or like did was there any like tasting afterwards or Yeah, so we yeah. all that was with the kids that were in my program, so we all went we cooked it up and then we also got to make tortilla de patata which is like oh. a potato omelet that's very yeah. popular for breakfast in Spain cool. I've actually never heard of that oh my goodness yeah. it's so delicious it's so delicious it's very different than anything here um and then yeah we got to eat our meal that we had cooked all yeah. together with um the professional chefs and everything so fun yeah. so what did you like normally do for meals did you have access to a kitchen or did you normally eat out so in that um, dorm style living, there were two women who were local that would come and cook our meals and like do oh, the laundry so and everything. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. So we we didn't have access to the kitchen. Um. So but those meals were delicious. You know, like we'd eat those. And, and then, was that part of the program fee? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's so nice. that was like yeah. with my room and board. Yeah. Kind of. That's so nice. Yeah. Yeah. And I know like if you had chosen the ha- homestay, they also prepared your meals okay. for you. Okay. Yeah. Um. So I would get like snacks and stuff if I got hungry in the middle of the day. Um. But yeah. I mean. My idea was, like, I'm going to Spain. I want to eat, like, the local food. Yeah, definitely, So I wasn't very, you know, stingy with, like, going out to eat or going to get papas or, like, anything Yeah, you're there to enjoy and experience, definitely. Yeah. For sure. Uh, Awesome. Was there anything while you were abroad that you, like, really felt you missed about the United States or (laughs) anything like that? I will say the one thing I really missed was the air conditioning. Yes. There's no air conditioning in Spain, which I did not realize (laughs) until I got there. And I was there from, like, June to mid-July, so it got pretty warm, for sure, and it's a little humid, for sure, Um, but, you know, you just kind of have to suffer <laughs> it's yeah okay. yeah definitely. they leave the windows open a lot and everything yeah. which is nice yeah it's those old-timey buildings and they just don't want to put little air conditioning no. in them like, yeah that's no. how um the like i stayed in an apartment hotel in brussels but some of the places like a lot of the places we went to didn't have air conditioning yeah. it was so hot in like july so yes and also even like the restaurants and things like mm-hmm. there's no air conditioning which is kind of nice because then the doors are open so yeah they keep that breeze coming in but it can get a little stuffy. And then the one other thing that I just really wasn't expecting when I went abroad was that there's really no, like, free water anywhere. It's mm-hmm. definitely, like, a lot less common than I yeah. think in the States. Because usually, you know, when we're walking around, you see girls and guys, like, with their water bottles. You know, you can fill them up at water fountains anywhere. And so I just felt a little dehydrated, I think, when I was yeah. over there. Especially because you're walking around so much and there definitely. is no air conditioning. Um, so I think just being mindful that, you know, you do need to, like, buy some water and just stay hydrated. Yeah, definitely. And, like, there's definitely not as many, like, public water fountains no. as well. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I found, very different country, but when I went to Rome, um, they had, they actually, like, made a mission to, like, have more public water fountains. Mm. And I, I don't know if it was the Pope. I forget what the tour guide told me, but basically some of the water fountains had sparkling water. Oh, wow. And I was like, wow, y'all are bougie Fancy. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah but definitely But very different. Yeah. yeah, like most most European countries I traveled to didn't have as many uh, public water fountains. So I, I experienced that as well. Um, but going off of that, what really motivated you to want to study abroad? When I got to college, studying abroad in Spain was, like, my goal, you know? I just think, like, it's such an opportunity that you're not going to have after you graduate, Mm -hmm. you know? Like, when else would I have five weeks that I could just leave, you know, and go do something like that? Um, So when I got here, I was very motivated to look into that. And then in talking with the study abroad office here, you know, I felt so supported. I didn't realize that there were so many options of external programs, Mm -hmm. too, that you could go on. Because when I had looked... not promoted a lot. Right. I didn't realize, you know, like, there wasn't a Spanish program through CNU. So I thought maybe that meant, like, oh, I can't do it through here. But then they helped me to find other Mm -hmm. external programs that worked for me. So then finding that, and then I also, you know... Financially, like I was able to receive a scholarship through the honors program here, so I was like, awesome. it would be a waste not to go. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I really wanted to time it. I went after my sophomore year, which I think was great timing because you know, now that I'm a junior, I'm hoping to find like an internship this summer. Yeah. Um, before senior year and then graduation. Mm-hmm. I did the same exact yeah. thing. I definitely felt that if you study abroad in the summer, like going into your junior year is kind of perfect, and then finding that internship. 
Uh, and then for me, I found that internship my junior going to senior year, and now I have a job. So, wow. Yeah, See, that's but, what I'm hoping for. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you'll get there, yeah. yeah. That's awesome that you were able to receive a scholarship from the honors program. Uh, was there any other, like, budgeting or financial Um, planning that you did before you went on your program? Absolutely. So I was very honest with myself. You know, I knew that when I went abroad, I didn't want to have to worry about the money because I was like, this is an experience I'm never going to have again. Mm -hmm. And I want to be able to just do the things I want to do. Mm -hmm. Um, So my upfront program cost was around like $5,200 without the airfare. Um, So that scholarship definitely helped with that and with the program. And then I think my flight round trip was about $1,200. So that was a pretty big upfront cost. I budgeted around, you know, I had saved for a year about $1,000 to spend while I was abroad. And that was a good amount while I was abroad for about a month. Um, Because, again, like when you're over there, you don't want to be contemplating whether or not you want to spend this money. Mm -hmm. But my big advice for that, too, would be like if you're looking at spending some money on something, ask yourself, like, is this something I could do in the States? Because if Mm -hmm. it is maybe not you yeah. know and if it isn't then go for it and mm-hmm. you know when I was abroad I was very conscious about experiences over things you know I didn't bring home oh, a ton yeah. of souvenirs yeah. because I felt like the stories that I was bringing home for the things I did invest in mm-hmm. were much more valuable than I love you know, that some things yeah that bring back. well so I know that you went surfing but were there any activities that you kind of were debating like oh should I do this but the experience is worth it like was there activity that you can that comes to the top of your mind that you're happy that you did, that you were like, I don't know if I should spend money on it. Definitely. My last weekend that I was there, a couple of my friends and I were debating on if we should, you know, drop the money to go to Barcelona or not because we were about to leave for Madrid. And, you know, like I said, that was my favorite city that Mm -hmm. we ended up going to. And it was, you know, that was towards the end of the trip. I'd been spending a lot of money. It was almost time to go home, but I was like, to pay to have to come all the way back to do it again is going to be way more expensive than just going now. And again, like, it was so worth it. We spent two days in Barcelona and again because everything's so walkable you can knock so much out in those two days Um, and it was so worth it for sure. Yeah that's great that you were able to uh, take that leap because Barcelona was like I've even I studied abroad but before I studied abroad I went to Barcelona and Barcelona still has been one of my favorite like cities I've went to so um, I love that advice that you had Um, but going off of that was there any other advice or tips for students looking to study abroad, uh, specifically like through your program or uh, just hoping to like learn, uh, kind of immerse themselves a little bit more in the language of Spanish? Yes, I would say my biggest advice is just to do some research. You know, everybody has different wants and needs from this experience and there are so many programs out there and honestly like don't be afraid to be specific you know like I knew I wanted to study in a university town I wanted to study in Spain I wanted it to be five weeks I wanted to do this amount of courses that would translate to my minor and I was able to find all of that through the study abroad office Mm -hmm. you know and especially to see new students like you have the resources to help you find those programs Um, so don't be afraid to come in and tell people exactly what you want but also if you don't know don't be afraid to ask the questions you know like oh I'm thinking about studying abroad I don't know if I can afford it I don't know where I should go Um, because it's an experience that you should definitely take while you're in college. My advice for when you do select a program um, is to definitely, again, do some research before you go. What I did before I went to Spain is I kept a list, like a priority list of things that I absolutely wanted to do, and then things that were kind of like, okay, I'd like to do this, but maybe not. Mm -hmm. Um, Because when you get there, like time is money. You don't want to be spending your time abroad trying to plan things. You know, Mm -hmm. you want to have a list of like, oh, these are things that I want to do. But make sure that you're honest with yourself because it is exhausting to travel. It can be exhausting when you're over there. You don't want to overpack your schedule with a bunch of things and then not be able to enjoy them. Definitely. That was one thing that I had no idea about. Like we took a train to Amsterdam and it was just such a long train ride and so crowded and by the time we got to Amsterdam we didn't want to do anything and like we basically wasted a night um, where it would have been better to just take like one more day or something like that that uh, there's a lot of exhaustion that comes with the actual physical traveling from one city or country to another that a lot of people don't realize before like right a long like right. a broad trip yeah like if you think I have three days you think you have like three full days but you need to account for the fact that like you're going to be exhausted especially yeah. like I remember right when we got to Madrid that was like the very first place we landed I was so jet lagged you know like I thought I was going to be able to have two full days in Madrid and then I ended up sleeping like half a day just because yeah. I was so jet lagged from the time difference and everything yeah definitely yeah. it's just about 
priorities and you know making sure you can get in what you want to get in and like actually being cognizant of making that list be like this is like what I need to do and what I really want to do but being honest like about how much time you actually have so can you discuss a little bit more about the benefits of cultural immersion and you kind of touched on it but like how do you feel that it really benefited you yes I think when I came back I really realized you know like when I was going my advisors here through the study abroad office, my professors, and then also the advisors that I had through ISA were just very encouraging to have an open mind, you know. Obviously, like, there's going to be comparisons between your home country and wherever you end up going, but just to have an open mind about these different cultures. And, you know, like, I noticed so many differences when I was in Spain that I could definitely appreciate, you know, like, they really value family time, and work over there is not the center of everyone's Mm -hmm. life, you know, which was incredible to see. It's like four o'clock and these families are out having dinner together. You know, nobody's staying at work until five, six, seven p.m., um, which was incredible. And just like coming back with that experience, you know, I feel like my priorities have shifted a little bit. Um, and I think that's just an experience that comes with traveling, especially as a young person and being able to take the experience from other places into your life as you grow and especially entering like the workforce and as you know, young people graduating from college. It's an experience that you can talk about in job interviews, you know, or as you apply for things. Um, People love to see that you've taken this experience and learned from it. Mm -hmm. And also just like the connections that I now have with people that I would have never met before. You know, I've got friends now in Germany and Korea and in Spain um, that I can now go visit later in life or, you know, like we can compare different situations that we're experiencing in our um, respective countries. Yeah, definitely. It is so interesting to identify a lot of those differences and just cultural norms Mm -hmm. um, because, like you said, they the way that they approach work life is very different than like how the United States. But like, you know, everyone does it differently. But it's also interesting to then take that back and going into your future career, understanding like, oh, this is the type of lifestyle I would want. Like, especially after experience certain things, Um, yeah. So you can take that and then apply that to your future career as well and I love what you had to say about how it really does help you with like the job search and being able to speak on your study abroad experience uh in job interviews for my job interview like I was able to talk about the skills I gained in our cultural communication um independence being able to navigate a city like all on my right. own there's a lot of soft skills that you pick up like while you're abroad so uh, I love that. Great. Yeah, and also on the same leaf, like having the opportunity to share your experience abroad, you know, mm-hmm. like as an American in, in these places where you're going, that's an also like a different perspective that these people haven't experienced before either. Maybe. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. We already discussed uh, a lot of the benefits that you felt like you gained from studying abroad, but how do you feel it's changed your life now that you're back in the United States? Do you feel you've changed at all or just what are the other uh, ways that it has benefited you? Definitely. I mean, you touched a little bit about that independence, you know, like flying across the world by myself. I gained a lot of confidence in coming back, you know. I was a little bit nervous going abroad, um, but then it was everything that I that I wanted it to be and more. And having that confidence coming back that I had this incredible experience and now I can share this with everyone else um, was just incredible, you know. And I think it also validated for me that, like, I do love to travel. And, yes, it's expensive, but those experiences are just so worth it you know Mm -hmm. and so now I'm looking into you know other places that I want to go and what I can learn from those experiences um and just being able to advocate my study abroad experience to other students um and other people just in general because you don't necessarily have to be a student to be applying to these external programs you know there were grown women that were in Spain in my classes who just decided that they wanted to learn from others you know and I think learning sometimes can be looked at something that has to happen in the classroom and I think study abroad really just shows that learning is a lifelong thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much for coming on Boarding All Captains. Of course. Yeah, thank you. Yeah.